Earth only got one bar. Who said Earth only got one bar? Who said that? Not me. And today we got what what's dying on every planet would look like. Um, death. I, I don't I don't I don't know, but you know what I'm saying we're gonna find out what it would be like to die on Mars in case we, I ever find myself in that situation. I guess. Hey man, you already know the vibes. One curse, three push-ups. Be sure to check out my other reaction channels. When you check out SXY, be sure to type in Stan X Yo Yo and not SXY because you're gonna get hit with Gooner content. We haven't quite beat the Gooners yet. They're too busy beating themselves. Sorry. Oh, uh, let's just get straight into it. Mercury. Mer Mercury. Okay. Mercury is the closest. Yo, you're just gonna burn because you're so close to the sun. I'm gonna try to predict them. That's what I'm gonna do. Closest planet to the sun. But if you think that means it's hot all the time, you're wrong. Oh, got it. No. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't. I, no. Mercury isn't hot, bro. Duh. You're gonna like. It's gonna be cold. At night, temperatures can plummet to an icy minus 180 degrees Celsius. For During sure, the day, however, that. they can skyrocket to 430 degrees Celsius. This extreme imbalance happens because Mercury doesn't have a proper atmosphere to regulate temperature. Instead, Tired. it has a very thin exosphere, which doesn't maintain heat. While apart from temperature, you wouldn't have to worry about weather on Mercury, the real dangers come from solar radiation and the lack of breathable air. In fact, Mercury gets almost seven times the solar irradiance that Earth receives. As the smallest planet in the solar system, Mercury okay. is full of craters, cliffs, and bumpy terrain, making it a pretty tough place to land as well. The low air okay. resistance doesn't help either. It would make slowing down a spaceship much harder, incre huh. increasing the chances of a high-speed crash. Landing during the daytime is out of the question because of the ex it just melts, extreme yeah. heat. The latest NASA spacesuits can only handle up to 121 degrees Celsius, nowhere near Mercury's daytime. Not even half, not even a Barely even a quarter for real. Temperatures of 430 degrees Celsius. Plus, keep in mind that Mercury's day lasts about half a year due to its slow. I'd get so much done if the days were half a year. Oh my God. Oh, rotation. Nighttime isn't much better. Oh wait, no, I have to sleep. That was just dumb. That was just dumb. That was just dumb. That was just Temperatures dumb. of minus 180 degrees Celsius far exceed NASA suit's lower limit of minus 157 degrees Celsius. Okay. So you'd still freeze. Your best bet would be to try landing in the Terminator zone, the area between day and night where temperatures are more moderate. Even okay. there, however, it can be risky as temperatures can change relatively quickly. Venus. Oh, that one, that one you're gonna burn. That one, nah, that one for sure you're gonna burn. You're gonna burn. That one I got you. Venus is the closest planet to Earth, sitting just 40 million kilometers kilometers away. This means the journey there would be relatively short, about four months. Its size and gravity wouldn't pose much of a problem, as they're pretty similar to Earth's. The first real issue you'd face, though, would be those beautiful yellow clouds you'd see as you approached the surface. <clears throat> Unfortunately, they're made of sulfuric acid, a highly corrosive substance that would destroy your lungs. How? Why? Why can't... You're telling me of all the planets in the solar system, like, we got the only safe one? I don't understand... How that concept works, bro. In seconds. But let's assume you've got a spacesuit advanced enough to filter it out. As you descend to the surface, you'd notice visibility dropping drastically. The atmosphere becomes incredibly th That John looked like when an American movie depicted somewhere in like the Middle East, bro. You know that yellow filter they be putting on everything? <laughs> that's that's what that hole looks Thick, like, bro. Made mostly of carbon dioxide, so you wouldn't be able to see much. Then there's the heat, an unbearable 450 degrees Celsius. If that wasn't enough, only about 10% yeah. of the sunlight reaches the surface, as it's blocked by the thick atmosphere, so it'd be pretty dark. On the surface, moving your arms and legs would be a serious struggle. Even though gravity okay. is nearly the same as on Earth, <clears throat> the air is so dense you'd feel like you're wading through a heavy liquid. With Imagine air so dense that you feel like you're going through water, bro. That is insane. They found three other planets that are basically Earth, but bigger. Where? With a good pressurized suit, you might... We adapted to Earth while evolving. That's why our planet is safe. Okay, I get that concept. I get that concept. Because that makes sense. Why hasn't that happened anywhere else, though? Like, why isn't there, like, a freaking Pokemon that lives, like, on Venus or something? I just... That's Houston? No cap. Last a few seconds down there. But before long... Let's say Venus, this is just freaking Arizona during the summer, bro. The pressure, about 92 bars compared to Earth's one bar at sea level, would crush your... Who said Earth only got one bar? I'm playing, I'm not gonna rap. I'm playing. Suit. And if that didn't kill you, the sulfuric acid you'd start breathing once your suit broke definitely would. Mars. Yeah. Mars is the second closest planet to Earth. Isn't Mars, like, relatively the most safe, though? And the most happy... 
You said I up this block. I bet you run. All right, bet. Who said Earth only got one bar? Who said that? Not me. Because I'm really a pacifist, but I'll still keep the peace. Best believe when I up this blick, I might send someone to Saturn's rings. Because I got bling. I'm a curse. Niggas know they ain't lame. When I up this piece, I'm like Jigsaw. Let's play a game. Nigga, I don't ever miss. This shit Benny Hanna's to me. I might up this. Ah, I might chop with a stick. I fucked it up. I messed it up. All right, back back to not cursing. This is for the reaction channel? Yes. Habitable of all eight planets. Daytime temperatures are much less extreme compared to Mercury and Venus, reaching up to a relatively okay. comfortable 20 degrees Celsius. However, the real challenge comes at night, or in certain parts of the planet, where temperatures can drop as low as minus 153 degrees Celsius. Another big issue, similar to Mercury, is Mars's incredibly thin atmosphere. It's mostly okay. made up of carbon dioxide, with only trace amounts of oxygen, meaning there's not okay. that much breathable air. This thin atmosphere also results in low pressure and high high levels of radiation exposure, both of which are incredibly dangerous. The average natural radiation level on Mars is 24 to 30 rads, which is about <laughs> 40 to 50 times the average on Earth. On top of Dang. that, Mars experiences frequent and extremely violent dust storms, with wind speeds re- Gang, that's literally just New Mexico, bro. That's not a problem. Put us there. Reaching up to 100 kilometers per hour. These storms could pose serious challenges, so any attempt at habitation would require a sustainable, airtight, and well-insulated life support system. Jupiter. Jupiter you can't even go on Jupiter right isn't it like all gas is the biggest planet out of the eight and it's one of the hardest planets to land on primarily because of its extreme radiation levels even 300,000 kilometers away the radiation would start penetrating your suit and you'd be done for but since that's a boring outcome let's assume you have a hypothetical suit that can block the radiation Jupiter's okay. gravity is two point oh wait no it's gravity is OD point four times stronger than Earth's meaning you'd be falling incredibly fast as you enter the first layers of the atmosphere here, you'd encounter white clouds made of frozen ammonia crystals with temperatures okay. around minus 150 degrees Celsius. The winds here are no joke, reaching insane speeds of up to 482 kilometers per hour. If you managed to descend about 150 kilometers through these top layers, you'd reach the okay. deepest point ever explored. This is how far NASA's Galileo probe got back in 1995. Beyond this point, things start getting... Isn't it crazy how we were making stuff that can reach freaking Jupiter in 1985? Like the fact that we had sal satellites on Jupiter, but not iPhones in 1985. That concept is crazy to me. Darker, and both temperature and pressure increase rapidly. Just as a fun fact, the pressure near Jupiter's center is estimated to be about 100 million times Earth's atmospheric pressure. Good After God. hours of falling, you might reach Jupiter's inner layers, where you'd encounter a supercritical fluid, a state okay. that's not quite liquid, but not gas either. Here, you'd kind of be swimming in this bizarre substance. If you continued further toward the center, you'd encounter metallic hydrogen, an extremely dense liquid that would trap you. But if you somehow managed to get through that, you'd reach okay. Jupiter's core, though we're not entirely sure if it's solid or not. The temperatures here would be about 24,000 degrees Celsius, roughly 4.5 times hotter than the sun's surface, Saturn. Cause the pressure is just so crazy, huh? Saturn is the second largest planet in the solar system, with an atmosphere primarily made of hydrogen and helium. The first challenge would be avoiding a crash with one of its 146 orbiting moons. Once you manage that, you'd encounter- These are the- these are called gas giants, right? Like Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune? It's iconic rings, which are made of debris from old moons, ice pellets, comets, and asteroids. Let's assume you're either an incredibly skilled pilot, or you're- Man. Oh shoot, my fault. That doesn't count as a crash. I, I'm, I'm getting through Saturn's rings, bro. I'm getting through Saturn's rings, bro. Spaceship is indestructible, so you don't meet your end by... Bro, give me an M3 with wings on it and a jet turbine in the back. I'm cutting that hole up, bro. I promise you. Smashing into space junk. As you approach Saturn's equator, you'd witness an incredible spectacle of red and purple auras caused by highly energetic hydrogen in the atmosphere. That hole looked like a ho conqueror's hockey, bro. However, this... You're a gas giant beauty comes with a catch. Hurricane force winds blasting at speeds of around 1,800 kilometers per hour would make it nearly impossible to stay steady. Trying to enter from the North Pole wouldn't be any better. Up there, you'd face a massive storm so large you could fit two Earths inside it. Good this God. region also has ammonia clouds, similar to Jupiter's, and temperatures that can plummet to a bone-chilling minus 250 degrees Celsius. As you fall deeper through the layers of clouds, the temperatures would start to rise again, eventually reaching zero degrees Celsius. At this point, 
point, while the cold <laughs> becomes less of an issue, pressure becomes okay. your biggest enemy. It increases to levels comparable to the deepest parts of Earth's oceans. Continuing further, the it's gonna be like that one submarine that had the Xbox controller in it. Gases around you would transition into a liquid state. If you somehow survived long enough to reach the center of Saturn, you'd encounter its molten rocky core, which is about 10 times the size of Earth. Temperatures here reach a scorching 11,700 degrees Celsius, more than twice as hot Good as the sun's God. surface, with pressure roughly 1,000 times greater than Earth's. Uranus. This is where- Ha ha! Come on, bro. Lock in. ...planets start getting really far from Earth, making the journey incredibly long. Uranus is one of the two ice giants, and the only planet in the solar system that spins on its side. It also rotates okay. faster than Earth, with a day lasting just 17 Earth hours. By the Got way, it. being an ice giant doesn't mean the planet is a solid ball of ice. Instead, it means it's primarily composed of elements heavier than hydrogen and helium. Like okay. Saturn, you'd need to avoid crashing into its rings. I'm telling y'all, bro, no blinkers, I got Once that. Once you pass them, you'd find yourself surrounded by toxic gas, and the temperature would drop rapidly to below minus 200 degrees Celsius. This For makes sure. it the coldest planet in the solar system. If the freezing cold and poisonous atmosphere didn't get you, you'd descend through the first layer of the atmosphere. Here, things get even worse. The air becomes dense, and you'd be pelted by ice pellets. Eventually, you'd reach something truly spectacular, a rain of diamonds, driven by winds of up to 900 kilometers. Wait, actual diamonds though? Kilometers per hour. But once again, there's a catch. The pressure here is about 100 times greater than Earth's, which would ultimately crush you. Neptune. Neptune is the second ice. Wow, he really didn't put Pluto on there because we really. Bro, I get that Pluto statistically isn't a planet or anything anymore. I still would have wanted to know what it would be like to land on Pluto though. He really doesn't have it in the video. Who constituted that we break up with Pluto, bro? I think personally, in my opinion, it has the hardest name as well. Call my ops Neptune the way I leave their bodies cold. Okay. I'm not mad at that. Because Pluto has its own orbit. What does that mean? Ice giant after Uranus, and its composition is very similar. Being the farthest planet from the sun, 30 times farther than Earth, it's incredibly dark. Like Uranus, okay. Neptune is extremely cold in its outer layers, but the inner layers are intensely hot due to immense pressure and heat from its core. Matter of fact, its core is about 7,000 degrees Celsius, which is hotter than the sun's surface. It also experiences the famous diamond rain, caused by high pressure breaking down methane and forming solid diamonds. Neptune's winds are... How do we know that? Among the strong... Its orbit is different to the rest of the planets, okay. I mean, still... I don't know, bro. I, I, man. Longest in the solar system, reaching supersonic speeds. In many ways, it's basically a twin of Uranus, so there isn't much to add. I'm joking. Hey, man, that's going to be the video. I uh, hope you guys liked it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. That's going to be it for me. Peace.